I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke as retired. The early days of World War II witnessed some of the most dramatic action in submarine warfare. Seven months after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese captured Attu and Kiska Islands in the Aleutian chain. The enemy was knocking at America's back door, and U.S. submarines were rushed to the Aleutian waters. Their mission was to cut off the Japanese supply lines, harass their shipping. Among the first dispatched to this troubled spot was the USS S-34. It was mid-June, 1942. Even though the winter snows and ice were mercifully absent, that ancient enemy of the sailor, fog, was on hand. Every patrol was a calculated risk. Navigation a constant hazard. Thank you. Yes, sir. Gibson? Yes? I'm Mike Sellers, exec and navigator on this old boat. Ensign Gibson, reporting for duty, sir. Welcome aboard. Thank you. The uh, skipper's waiting. We've only four officers, and we certainly can use you. Lieutenant Thomas L. Wogan was the captain. Lieutenant J.G. Quinton R. Thompson of Tucson, Arizona, was engineer and diving officer. And Lieutenant J.G. Thomas C. Williamson was gunnery and torpedo officer. Excuse me, sir. I'll be topside, Captain. Right, Mike. I guess you've seen lots of action, sir. Well, it looks to me mighty deceiving. We've only had two patrols and saw nothing but fog and whales. <laughs> Now, uh, suppose you stow your gear and climb into your work clothes? Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, what's the regulation on beards? Purely voluntary, if you got to touch. Now, old Sump here, he's having a pretty miserable time. Have you tried vitamins? I've tried everything. No, you haven't, boy. There's only one thing gonna make those chin whiskers sprout, and you got to use it every day. Well, what's that? Diesel oil, boy. Just plain old diesel oil. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Like most of the Aleutian Islands, Attu was constantly bathed in fog. But the S-34 used it to creep undetected into the harbor of Attu Island. Feeling? Nothing, sir. A few miles away was the enemy garrison. Big. Close to the beach, far into the bay. Yeah. Yeah, I can't make it out, but looks like we're due to get something today. Hold ahead. Pull. Aye, aye. Battle stations. Set the torpedo room, Thump? Tubes ready. Firing set up perfect. Good. Holy smoke! Left four runner! Destroyer. The destroyer was headed straight toward the S-34's broadside. The S-34 turned to put a stern to the enemy. This way she presented a narrow silhouette, becoming a smaller and more difficult target at the new angle. He's turning away. Let's get those sitting ducks. The 
Jet 34 got set again to fire. Range. Mark. 1750. sitting duck. Oh, they haven't gotten the range yet. Yeah, and I don't want to be around when they do. We're not budging an inch. Mike, we'll have to lighten the boat and float her off. Blow main ballast tanks. Blow main ballast tanks! Blow main ballast tanks. Emergency. All back emergency. Uh, the shells are falling all around. The patrol boat. It's coming around the stern of the tanker. Where's the destroyer? No, we're off the reef. We flood everything. Right for runner. Take her down. Port side at about 30 yards, unless we get him first. Stand by. Tube's ready. Angle set. Bearing. 345. 342. Fire one. Fire. Fire two. Two fire. All torpedoes missed the stern. The destroyer is passing down our port side, close aboard. about those lights. Right. Give me. Go with Yes, sir. Everything okay here? Oh, all shook up. It's still breathing, boy. Is that, that destroyer still waiting up there? No, no, Tommy. i got to check the lights. Mr. Sellers. Coffee, sir? Oh, no, no. None for me, thanks. Uh, give me go ahead, Hanson. Thanks. Uh, tell me, Ayanto, how come you're taking this so easy, like all the others? Ever seen action before? Oh, in the Philippines. When the Japanese drop bombs, they no kill Ayanto then. They no get him now. You think maybe Captain likes some? He sure would. Destroyer's in trouble. 
She piled up on that reef we just left. Let's get up there fast and pump those torpedoes into them. It'll be a sure kill. It would thump except for one thing. That patrol boat's still up there. What's she doing now? She's overhead, circling around. Mike, yeah. shut down everything. Gyros, fans, blowers, everything. We're gonna wait it out. They just might think we've been sunk. Well, the heat'll be pretty rough. We can take it. We still have some oxygen bottles. Well, not very many, Captain. Enough to last, if we're careful. How long do we lay down? Well, it's 10.30 now. We'll wait till 2100 when it gets dark up there. In the meantime, let's relax. Just, uh, take it easy. How long we stay here, Mr. Sellers? Till nightfall. Till nightfall? Well, there's enough hot air in here already, fellas. Can the chatter. We don't want to generate extra carbon dioxide. <laughs> the men have to breathe, Wiggins. Well, make sure you breathe as little as possible. Take it easy, boys. He says they're still up there, Captain. Yeah, I figured. Hey, most of the men are better down. How about a little cribbage, huh? All right. Yeah. Say, uh, are you trying to advertise to the nips where we are? Well, it's only cards. I doubt they could hear it. Maybe so. But how do we know what kind of sound equipment they may have now? Well, I haven't read anything like that in the intelligence reports of you, Captain. Well, now, just because intelligence hasn't heard about it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You know, those Japanese are awfully smart. How about those one-man submarines they had at Pearl Harbor? Why, for all we know, they might have one of them up there over our heads right now. Well, if they do, he'll come in mighty handy. We could play four-handed cribbage. <laughs> come on. Lemonade. Lemonade, right. sandwiches. Maybe Great. you're hungry. Thanks. Darn good lemonade. Mm -hmm. Hey, Anto, you want to bring the whole Japanese Navy down on our head? Boy, don't do that. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, we ought to be drinking a toast. But for the life of me, I can't think of a thing worth celebrating. Well, I can. It's my sixth wedding anniversary. Captain, let's drink to the health of Mr. Sellers and his charming bride. <laughs> it's very funny, very funny. How about a sandwich? <laughs> thirty in the morning until 8.30 that night, the crew rested, sleeping as if drugged. Lack of oxygen was taking effect. Supplies all gone. All right, Mike. Start everything up. Yes. Captain, there's several small power boats up there. Anything else? There's another ship heading in. Sounds like a tug. Oh, they're probably going to tow that destroyer off the reef. Well, they'll probably go away as soon as they get in deep water. Captain, they're dragging for us. You can hear the sound of the cable yourself.
What do they do if the drag catches? Well, now, if they want to get real nasty, they can attach a line and send a death charge down. They might try to capture us alive, keep the submarine for study. How would they do that, Captain? Attach a line and buoy us. And if we get underway, they'd, they'd just follow the buoy. toward the other side of the bay. Well, Captain, let me relieve you for a while. You get a little rest, huh? Oh, thanks, Mike. Don't you hesitate to call me. Right. It's going to be 2,100. Everyone not on watch is turning, huh? Yeah. Yet? Yes, sir. But I can hear his propellers and the patrol boats. Well, we'll have to wait a while longer. Longer? How much, Captain? Well, we'll wait till 0300, then we'll see how we stand. Almost flat. Very well. The men needed fresh air to live. It was now a race against death. The crew of the S-34 was slowly being suffocated by carbon dioxide poisoning below, while above, the enemy waited. The captain could no longer play the waiting game. He had to take a calculated risk, make a command decision. He would take her up and make a run for it. Start your jail. Oh, but the depth charges jolted her pretty badly. We'll see. Bring up slowly to periscope depth. Aye, sir. Bring up slowly to periscope depth. Out from number one auxiliary to C. to be the silent service. But this tub makes more noise than a firecracker on a hot stove. It's been an hour since we left the bottom. We ought to be well out of the harbor. Destroyer heading this way. Captain, yeah, we're 250. 50 people are our test at. I know, I know. What. Keep on going down.
350. Level off! Level off! For three hours, the S-34 proceeded at the suicidal depth of 350 feet. took an axe to my head. Yeah, same here. Oh, Captain, the men in the torpedo room in the after battery are unconscious. We stayed on there any longer, they'll never wake up. Bailey, is that destroyer still moving away from us? Yes, sir. Bear up slowly at periscope depth. Periscope depth. Russia had sprung the hull so that the periscope could just barely move. Nothing up there but fog. Beautiful, beautiful fog. Let's go up. Battle stations, gun action! I'm breathing fresh air, sir. Foggy fresh air. Sweetest stuff in the world, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment with my special guest. Eight days later, when the S-34 returned to Dutch Harbor, they found pieces of depth charge in the wooden deck and in the conning tower fairing. Propellers, rudder, and stem were bent from the encounter with the reef and the bottom of the sea. There were large, ragged holes in every ballast tank. But the greatest discovery they made was, well, suppose we let Captain Robert F. Sellers, the real-life executive officer of the S-34, tell us. Mike, did you ever solve the mystery of that diver that kept walking on the hull? It wasn't a diver, it turned out to be a giant octopus. We found the imprints of its suction discs on the hull. The story of this patrol could be called the case of the frustrated octopus. Yes, I guess it could, but since we weren't credited with any damage to the enemy, officially it was just another unsuccessful patrol. After your boat and crew survived depth charges, shelling, grounding on a reef, submerging a boat designed for 200 feet to 350 feet, and mass carbon dioxide poisoning without a single casualty, I'd call that one of the most successful unsuccessful patrols in submarine warfare. I think all of you deserve medals just for bringing her back. We weren't too unhappy about the way it turned out. Well, we are glad you're here and able to tell us about it. Congratulations to you and your crew. Thank you, Tommy. We hope you will be with us again for another true story of the silent service. Thank you.